Okay guys, now in my last video I talked about uh, ba the basics of the electrical system and I realised that saying getting somebody to give you a jump start is all fine and dandy but what if neither person knows how to do it but you do happen to have a set of jump leads? Well it's very very straightforward. There's dozens and dozens of different sorts of jump leads. If you go to an automotive shop, buy the second cheapest. The cheapest you'll use once and they'll fall apart. The second cheapest you'll probably get five years out of. Of course, that is generally true that the more money you spend, the better quality they'll be because they end up having better quality cables, better quality connectors. But for the average person, you know, somewhere around $30 or so is quite sufficient for jumper leads. Now, you, despite what, it, what the rumours say, you don't need to buy the fangdangle anti-spark, anti, you know, anti-suicidal jumper lead thingies. They've got one-way diodes and intelligent control boxes and all that sort of garbage in them. It's just something else to break. Just buy your normal plain Jane jumper leads, um, especially for older vehicles. Now, on newer vehicles, there is something you do have to be careful of. When you hook them up, you want to avoid them sparking. Um, otherwise, you may short the, electron the computer or some of the sensitive electronics. But it's relatively easy to do. Just turn your headlights on, to your, or turn your parkers on, or your headlights onto the low beam when you first hook them up, and that will take the, the power spike out of the system, and you won't have that problem. So you, you don't need to do it. It's just a that's the easiest way to make sure you won't have any problems. Okay, now I don't actually have anything attached to the other end of these jumper leads, um, but it's just for demonstration, so you'll get the idea. Um, I always, you know, you've got a basic rule of electronics. Your red is always your positive, which is indicated by a, usually a little positive symbol or something to that effect on the on the battery itself. Same with the negative, there'll be a little negative symbol. Um, if not, you can always tell your negative is the one that goes to the uh, goes to the motor or to the body somewhere. So that's the easiest way to check. You don't want to get them mixed up because you will break things. So I always start with my negative terminal and the reason I do that, I know some people say to start with the positive and I think you're actually supposed to but the main reason I always start with the negative is because I want to find a nice solid earth point somewhere on the engine. I don't want to hook it up to the battery because if this lead, you know, you're trying to run the power from the jumper lead through this and then it's going to get split. Some's going to go into the battery, some's going to go into the lead. Now the same is true if you hook it to the body because it's still going to feed back into the battery. But if this cable or connection isn't quite correct, uh, it won't affect the starting ability of the vehicle. So we want to find a nice solid earth point anywhere that's not painted and where there's bare metal, usually the alternator bracket or an engine lift bracket or an aircon bracket. If you can't find somewhere, by all means hook it up to the battery terminal, that's not a problem, but it's just not my first choice. And the reason I say I hook that up first is because I don't want to have this sitting on the battery and I'm connecting and reconnecting and disconnecting and trying to get a decent earth because you'll get sparks and you'll fry things. Uh, now of course we've all by this stage checked to make sure our battery terminals are tight and that there's no corrosion on there. If there is corrosion, depending on the terminal, get usually a 10 or a 12 or a 13 mil spanner undo it, lift it off. You haven't got to touch it, wear, wear, wear a glove if you wish. Uh, if, it's, if it's got a build up on it, it won't hurt you. Just don't rub your eyes with it or put it in your mouth because it tastes strange. Um, but take it off, chip hot water over it or hot water and bicarb over it um, and it will clean it up perfectly. Throw it back on, tighten it back up and check the other one and check and see if that's fixed it. But generally you know, you'll know if you'll have a dead flat battery. Um, if the battery is dead flat, like you've left your lost on overnight and you come out in the morning and there's no power at all in the battery, then when you hook it up to the other vehicle, you may actually want to leave it hooked up for five minutes before you try and start the, the car. Now at this point, before I'm going to put this positive terminal on, if I had another vehicle here, I'd now start the car and preferably a second operator or a brick to put on the accelerator to bring the revs up to about 2000 RPM because, you know, or a fast idle because that's where the alternator becomes on the other vehicle acts as a, as a booster pack. 
then of course all we do is to hook this up to the positive terminal like so and as I said if that was dead flat you'd leave it sit for a couple of minutes and then go and try it if it's not flat you know you hook it up check your headlights yep they're nice and bright now and then go and start the vehicle um, if your alternator if you know that your alternator wasn't charging like your alternator light to come on for a while and which means your alternator is not charging and say you're trying to get the car home or something like that and the battery does go flat same thing let it charge up let it sit for 10 15 minutes half you know if you can if you've got the option of the other car hanging around that long or put on a battery charger um, and it should hopefully get you home but um, so hopefully yeah as I said to jump start a vehicle very simple very easy if done correctly you just got to think about it a little bit you know, always carry a set of jumper leads there's only a handful of things you always should carry in your boot jumper leads so just remember the basics and you should be fine.